Hello everyone and welcome to season two of Zoo Nation TV. I'm your host Clay Carbohall. First, we've got to say thank you to everyone who commented, wrote us, messaged us, wondering when season two would be kicking off. We really appreciate all the shares, the likes, and the comments you left on our past Zoo Nation videos. But we're back with season two, and a lot of things have changed here since we last reported, and they're all changing at the hands of Mother Nature. Our hearts go out to all of you affected by Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, and are currently being affected by Hurricane Maria. You know, a lot of amazing stories came out of the hurricane. A lot of tragic stories as well. We wanted to focus on some of those really amazing zoo stories. When Hurricane Harvey struck the Texas Gulf Coast, facilities that weren't affected jumped in to answer the call of those in need. SeaWorld San Antonio and the San Antonio Zoo in San Antonio, Texas were able to get to Houston when no one else could to help the downtown aquarium in Houston. They actually had a helicopter fly in two biologists from SeaWorld San Antonio and drop them in the aquarium to help rebuild and get that facility up and running and also give the staff there a break. To all of you who have lived through these storms at zoological facilities to ensure the animals are safe, we love you and thank you for that. That's incredible. San Antonio Zoo and SeaWorld then moved on to the Texas Zoo in Victoria, Texas, along with other partners like the Houston Zoo, the Fort Worth Zoo, the Dallas Zoo, just to name a few. The Texas zoos all came together to help facilities that were in drastic need of help. Other smaller facilities along the coastline for Hurricane Harvey were destroyed, however. Turtle research centers, turtle rescue centers, uh, smaller facilities were just pummeled by the storms. But the zoologic facilities in Texas are answering the call to help those facilities. And then just when you thought you were out of the woods, Hurricane Irma came up and slammed Florida, affecting countless zoological facilities from Miami all the way to central Florida. Our hearts go out to all of those. Now, there are a few facilities that are still in the rebuilding phase, including Dolphin Discovery in the Virgin Islands, which they sustained some facility damage and they're not taking reservations again until January 1st. Now, you've got to think about the Dolphin Research Center. Dolphins Plus. If you go to Dolphins Plus Facebook page, you'll see how many items they're asking for donation uh, from the public. So go to their social media accounts to see what Dolphins Plus needs to get up and running. And of course, you saw the big story that Dolphin Connection moved their dolphins from their facility uh, down in South Florida in the Keys all the way to SeaWorld Orlando, where the dolphins, from what I hear, uh, still remain as facility cleanup uh, continues down at the Dolphin Connection. Uh, Theater of the Sea, I mean the damage Theater of the Sea uh, withstood, uh, they're taking donations uh, for money and also items they need. The Turtle Hospital, which sustained damage but is continuing to rebuild and continuing to rescue turtles. Miami Seaquarium, of course, Miami Seaquarium right down there where the eye of the storm really hit the hardest. And, uh, you know, a lot of people online said that the staff left all the animals to fend for themselves. That could not be further from the truth. The Miami Seaquarium staff was there. They rode out the storm with the animals, took care of the animals. And everyone is doing fantastic down at the Miami Seaquarium. However, cleanup and recovery is underway. Uh, Zoo Miami. Zoo Miami was hit very hard and will remain closed until further notice as, as habitats uh, get rebuilt. Well, from what we're hearing on the inside, a lot of the animals are back on display. And you can check Zoo Miami's Facebook page as they continue to update you on the situation down there. Uh, the Palm Beach Zoo, uh, it's partially reopened, uh, but they are doing a lot, of, a lot of good work to help restore some of those habitats. If you go to their social media page, you might even see a big story about uh, a tree that slammed into one of their uh, wallaby enclosures and just the size and power of the storm and how it destroyed that wallaby's habitat. Um, Clearwater Aquarium, of course, home to winter, uh, the very world famous dolphin. It's open, but man, is it in need of some repair. Uh, there's going to be a fundraiser, however, on September 25th at a local uh, Buffalo Wild Wings in Clearwater, Florida. Uh, you can go down there and support the Clearwater Aquarium. Although their facilities sustain damage and they're running uh, kind of wounded and open to the public, they're still rescuing animals. They're still helping animals in the area. Uh, Big Cat Rescue and the Center for Great Apes also. Uh, the Center for Great Apes uh, was stain, uh, sustained a lot of damage uh, to their property, but they are cleaning up everything. And of course, same with Big Cat Rescue. Uh, these facilities are in desperate need of your help. And of course, 
we here at Zoo Nation, we stand with everyone that has had to go through Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, and currently having to live through Hurricane Maria. Baby, 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 baby. This little baby, nicknamed Mini Yuan Z, has been born at Zoo Park de Boulevard. Now this is in France. Now this baby is one of two pandas born at the zoo. Unfortunately, of the twins, only one of the babies survived the birth. Now this baby, who today weighs around 10 pounds, is seen in this video snuggling with its mother, but also getting very, very, very necessary care from the animal care team at that zoo in France. Baby pandas, of course, are uh, very sought after for conservation needs. Uh, the Chinese government really, really funds the research and conservation around the world of pandas. Every panda birth is celebrated. Now, this baby's mother is Hun Hun, and she gave birth, of course, like I said earlier, to twins, but one died very, very shortly after birth. Our thoughts go out to all the care team uh, that's focusing on the survival of this other panda baby, and I know that it'll be successful. Uh, great job to our friends in France on the birth of this amazing little baby. And our final Zoo Born of the Week takes us to San Antonio, Texas, to SeaWorld San Antonio, as they celebrate the birth of a brand new gray, squishy beluga whale calf. Born to Mother Chrissy at the Beluga Stadium inside the SeaWorld Park, this little beluga whale and mom are doing fantastic. So much so that the SeaWorld social media pages announced that viewing for the mother and calf happened later that day. Uh, born Sunday at around 12.30 in the afternoon, this little beluga whale is already making waves. Now, they're gray when they're born, so they can better hide inside of their mom's shadow, living under the ice flows of the Arctic Circle. Now, when a calf is born, uh, they're usually around 5 feet long and around 130 to 170 pounds. Now, a full-grown beluga whale can be 3,300 3, pounds, that's a pretty big animal, and around 15 feet long. Now these animals are benthic feeders using their peg-like teeth to squish crustaceans at the bottom of the ocean floor. Now beluga whale breeding has not something that's new to SeaWorld San Antonio. They've had a long history of very successful breeding program of this incredible species. Now beluga whales in the natural environment face threats from global warming. They also face threats from human interference in oil drilling as their habitat dwindles. Breeding programs like SeaWorld San Antonio, along with other beluga facilities here in the United States and around the world, are going to be important to the success and survival of this Arctic species. For this week's coming Zoom, we have to go to Sydney, Australia. In fact, we have to go to Western Sydney, Australia, because a world-class zoo has just been granted permission to begin construction uh, by the Planning Assessment Commission there in Western Sydney. A $36 million native and exotic conservation uh, animal sanctuary will be built on a 16.4 hectare block of land overlooking the Bungarabi Park. Now, this will feature 30 exhibitions, including the African Safari and an Aboriginal and Natural Heritage program focusing on the local peoples of Western Sydney. This is truly the new evolution of zoos. It's going to fuse the way people experience the animals with the education and conservation they can receive by actually visiting the zoo. So as you look at, these, at these, this video and at these sides of what the zoo is going to look like, you go from area to area almost seamlessly and the habitats are divided so so secretively that you wouldn't even know there's a fence there. It's almost like you're walking through Africa. Now this new zoo will promote awareness and an affinity with animals, improving our educational outcomes and increasing the willingness of people to value and protect them. That's right. No other zoo in Australia offers an embedded Aboriginal heritage program of this kind, the kind that the Western Sydney Zoo is going to uh, be bringing to the forefront. Now this whole attraction is expected to create $45 million in tourism uh, for the economy and also will bring in around 
745,000 visitors a year. Now, this is a coming zoo. This entire zoo isn't expected until 2018. Keep checking here to Zoo Nation for updates as this world-class zoo finishes its completion. I cannot wait to go to Australia in 2018 to visit that brand new revolutionary zoo. Now, conservation comes up a lot here on Zoo Nation TV because all the world's zoos are dedicated to the conservation of habitat, just like the Zoo Nation Network Studios here, the great outdoors. But some of the animals may get overlooked because of their size. You hear very frequently conservation stories about elephants or tigers, rhinos or polar bears, uh, large whales or sea turtles, but we can't remember some of the ones that slip under the rock and avoid your radar. Well, zoos in Ohio have not forgotten that. Neither have universities. Take a look at this salamander's conservation and reintroduction back into the waterways of Ohio. Feels like I'm holding a very animated ball of snot that's been working out on the weekends. Hey guys, I'm Maddie Safaya from Joe's Big Idea at NPR. We are here at Yellow Creek in southeastern Ohio relocating hellbender salamanders. Look at that pretty face. Hey buddy. You ready to find a new home? Greg Lips. Yeah. Salamander Whisperer. Is that, what do you go by? What's your street name? My title is Amphibian and Reptile Conservation Coordinator. Right, so Salamander Whisperer. <laughs> what are we doing here? Well, we're putting hellbenders back in the wild. They've been around 160 million years, and now they're not doing well? That should be a real concern for us. So getting them back into the system, getting them back established, getting them off of the endangered species list, that's really what we're trying to do. We have a plan for the hellbender, and that plan has two big components. One is we have to protect the good habitat and restore the good habitat. The second part of it is take these babies and release them back in the wild to bolster those populations. And the two things are kind of useless without each other. Look at that little cuddle puddle. So are you gonna let me Abs release one of these if, hellbenders? If you're careful, sure, absolutely. We'd be happy to. I'm gonna do it. So what we do is we start at the downstream end of the rock field. We have a few folks in snorkel and mask and wetsuits, and they're going up and they're finding these big rocks. And then we're delivering hellbenders out to them and we're sliding hellbenders underneath those rocks and they're free from there. That's, that's gonna be their place. <laughs> So what is actually causing these species to be endangered in this area? What we're seeing in most of these populations is no youngsters. And we think that's because of the habitat, and that habitat is being lost mainly through siltation. It's all about the land use occurring around the creek that's really the largest driving factor in the suitability of the habitat for the hellbender. What keeps you coming back? to these salamanders and working day after day after day on this kind of stuff. Well, I, I absolutely love them. There's no, I mean, they're, they're fascinating creatures to be around, but the real driver for me is I wanna see them better off than when I started. I feel this need that we've gotta do something and we can do something. We know the major problems with our creeks. We know how to rear animals in captivity. We know how to do a lot of these things. So it seems to me like I, I, I feel irresponsible if I wasn't out here doing this yeah. kind of thing. The first time we did this and when I went back and recaptured one of those animals and realized that's an animal that lived its life in a zoo, we put it out here and a year later I'm catching it and it's grown and lived okay. on its own. I wasn't ready for the impact that would have like, yeah. wow, this, is, this animal is now at home. This is where he's living and it's a, it's a great feeling. Well, that wraps up this episode of Zoo Nation TV. Thank you all so much for coming back and watching this episode. Listen. We want to hear from you. We want to answer some of your questions in next week's episode, so leave them in the comment section below and we'll get to a couple of your questions. We want to know what zoos around the world you're visiting and what kind of stories you would like us to tell or you would like to hear. Or maybe you have an insight on a story. Message us here at Zoo Nation, right here on our Facebook page or comment on our YouTube videos. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Remember conservation rules and if there's a way for you to donate to any zoo affected by a natural disaster, whether it's an earthquake in Mexico City, uh, a tsunami in Japan, or giant, giant hurricanes along the coasts of the United States, please donate your goods, your money, or your time to help them rebuild. Thank you all so much. Take care of one another. Take care of the wildlife. Conservation rules. This is Clay signing off, and we'll see you later.